Weird seeing you on camera. It's been a while. Where have you been? I went to Canada for a couple weeks and then I went, no, I've been around, but I don't know where the time's gone. Cole, we've been kind of jumping around farming and everything else. And I don't know, it seems like we've been spending a little more time with attorneys this year than normal, but that's a whole different story. I do want to thank everybody too, just for just being there lately, I've gone places, me and Mama Cornstar, or I've had people come up to me, shake my hand, and just give me that quick talk, and it really makes me feel good because you people, you mean the world to me, and so thank you guys so much for making me feel special. Wait a second, so does this mean you are going to go back to consistently posting videos? Well, you should probably tighten that up, Jeez. Well, I just wondered, I actually knew need to jack it up and check them. I think it's the other side that's loose. It could be. But I do need to, we do need to check. I'm gonna change oil and stuff. So, topic of the day. What are we gonna talk about? Sounds like a snowstorm maybe coming. <laughs> Not ready for that. You got a new snowblower on the other side you get to try. Yeah. Can't say I didn't get, never got you nothing. We do have a new snowblower for this skid loader, but I know Mama Cornstar all the years we've been together. Why don't you ever make, I always make a little path down the driveway. If we can get through it, I'm happy. I. I do not enjoy pushing snow. I don't like snow, so. <laughs> if you can spend three minutes pushing snow, that's what you'll do. As long as you will not get stuck with the pickup, you're good yeah, to go. Yeah, Mama Cornstar comes home with her car and she's like, how am I supposed to get drive? I don't know, I have four wheel drive, so you. No, I always make sure she can get parked in the garage and stuff, but it can be just a little path and I'm okay with that, so. But now Cole bought a snowblower. The skid loader here has got really nice heat in it, so that is going to make it so much more enjoyable. As long as I'm running the snowblower and the spout don't come back and bust my front windshield up. What traumatic event did you have as a child that made it where you don't want to plow snow? I don't know. Well, probably part of it is everything we had didn't have a cab on it, or you're just, we had a tractor with a snowblower on it and it had heat hauser on it. Well, you were drenched in the snow from floating around. I, I just never enjoyed pushing snow. And then I got good friends and neighbors. You see them out there all day long pushing snow. Everything in their yard is just clean and beautiful looking. And there is us with one little ant track through the snow drift. That's probably a good four vehicles a year, I'd say, get stuck in the driveway oh, usually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's how you keep people away from your house. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Well, you want to come over and you can't get through the driveway? Yeah, it's like you're not coming over today. But for some reason, it seems like we have the FedEx man here almost every day, UPS man, some kind of delivery man. So I suppose for respect to them guys, they do a fantastic job. I probably need to make the path a little bit wider so they can get up and get through. Have you ever seen those guys walk or speed walkers? Uh, they park down by the road. And yeah, <laughs> they can just throw it by the mailbox or something, we'll find it. So when it comes to working on the farm, you work with your two boys, me and Cooper. Ooh. And you worked really well with grandpa when he was alive. What do you think makes it where you all work together so well? Because it seems like a lot of people don't seem to have that relationship with their family when it comes to work find it, that's the hardest people for them to work with i have seen that with father sons i don't know what it is and and well i'll be honest sometimes when i was younger and then as i've got older a little older uh i've seen so many fathers and i'm not trying to be mean here but i've seen so many fathers you got to do it my way. You got to do it my way. And they're trying to do it nicely, but son, you're not doing it my way. You're carrying the buckets wrong or something. And actually I seen that with one neighbor once. And I'm not trying to put you down. The son was carrying two buckets and he wasn't holding them like dad and dad kind of flipped out. I guess with my dad, my dad was always so easy going. There's a hundred ways to skin a, a rock, cat, whatever you want to say, but we got to upset we we each do things different and i guess learning over with my dad all the years he was so laid back for me it's just like hey you guys are doing your thing you each you and cole got your own way of doing different things you and cooper and i gotta accept it that hey sometimes i actually see it your ways might be better than how i've done it all these years and 
we got to let them little things go and it's like we're here as a team and I guess that's why I'm really proud of working with my whole family it's just fun working with the family and it's it's our stuff so what if we were doing something you knew it wasn't going to work for us like you you had learned the hard way and then you see us wanting to do that how would you approach that I have done it many times and long you know, as long as everything's safe you know I would never let you guys walk in a trap where okay you're gonna get hurt for doing this wrong but I've watched before and it's like I don't think it's gonna work but you sometimes got to experiment on your own like hey this didn't work but I don't want to be the one like well dad always thinks he's right or because I'm not it's but. a lot better to make us feel like we're the ones who figured it out versus yeah, you telling us yeah. kind of thing as long as it's not gonna be a you know end of the world problem by us making that mistake and as all you guys have watched Cooper has really became I'm just impressed. He's become a great little mechanic. He stays calm. He, you know, and you've figured out so many things too, Cole, on your own. Like, hey, what makes this tick? So as a father, you know, watching my daughter grow up and become a great girl. She's always, you know, and Mama Corn Star, working hard to keep our family together, bringing home money from her job to pay bills. We actually got a really good team. Hey, did you just go? I'm down here in the big shop right now with Cole. We're doing a quick film, and then uh, I'll go over and make sure that conveyor, you know, if I have to put some boards under it, just if Cody needs to load out of it, I don't know if there's a whole load yet in the overhead. How long have you been farming for now? Whew. Actually, I started around 12 years old. I had dad let me start getting into hogs and sows. At age 13 years old, I was actually paying taxes. My dad could not claim me anymore on his taxes, so from 13 years to now. I was in high school when I bought my first 80 acres, and it came over the loudspeaker that the principal heard that I bought a farm, and it was in the paper, so it went over the loudspeaker, and that was pretty cool. But I tell you what, back when I first bought my first farm, it was a lot of money. It was $1,450 an acre and I was sweating bullets. And now I don't even know if you could buy an anthill for $1,450 an acre. I mean, things have gone absolutely crazy, but it took a lot of work and a lot of time to pay that farm off. So, you know, I guess that's one thing we always got to think about. Even you younger people work hard, put your mind to your dream and go for it. So if you could go back to when you were 12 and you started farming and you could redo everything you've done along the way on the farm, what changes would you make? That's a good question. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Let me check to see who's calling now. Hmm. Texas, Houston, Texas. But, yeah, oh boy, you know, and that's one thing we all know, we can't go back on time and change time, but. But if there's someone right now who, let's say is 13 years old or 30 years old or 40, you know, they're get, just getting started and maybe some mistakes that you've made along your farming career along the way that you're like, oh, if I wouldn't have done that, it would have pushed me so much further for, forward. You've learned from it now, so like you got that tool in your tool belt, but if someone can bypass, you know, hopscotch that mistake. Yeah, oh, that's kind of caught me on the, it's a good one. I, I got to think on that one for a minute. I think cool. it's good to make the mistakes. Yeah, and it is good sometimes to jump in things and make mistakes. I mean, I, I don't care. We can be the most perfect person in the world, which I don't know that person, but mistakes are going to be happen. We, we got to go with at the time what looks good, and if it fits in, you do it. And maybe six months down the road, maybe it wasn't the right move, but you, you just, I guess doing something is better than doing nothing. You feel you did a lot of years of doing nothing? Or? Oh no, it seemed like we were always working, 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 and uh, whew. I know maybe sometimes looking back, maybe I wish it might have taken a little more time to go off and do some fun things. You don't want to get married to your work, and 
I used to be married to the work all the time. And then, you know, Mama Cornstar wants like, well, we got to have a little time for ourselves too. And, and she's totally right. And date night, just going out, spending time together with your loved one. It's very, very important. I'm glad to see you backed off from 52 weeks a year, seven days a week, <laughs> 18 hours a day to 50 and a half weeks a year, yeah. 16 hours a day, six and a half days a week. <laughs> That, you know, and as you know, on coal station, we're trying to get things a little better. And, uh, you know, you see kind of what's going on with our one project over there. that's been slapping us hard in the face. And it's, it's heartbreaking when you work so hard and sometimes things just ain't working the way you want them. But we're going to get through that. I'd say in the last three years especially, we've made a lot of really big jumps. Yeah. And just time savings and being able to do things more timely and have time to do stuff. We're starting to get to the point now where this year, like with unloading corn and beans and stuff, you know, we're not setting up all the tractors in the cold and, you know, worried about stuff gelling up. And and a big part of that is a big thank you to you and Cooper. Uh, me and my dad always work great together and we can't change. But my dad ended up getting brain cancer and passing away about the time you were getting out of college. So... Cole was able to step in quick, you know, and Cooper was in high school, so when he got home from school, but now that everybody's out of school, we've really pitched in trying to be more time management on stuff, and it's, it's showing, you know. So if you look at our operation now, if you could make any changes in what we're currently doing, what would you like to change? And you're throwing some tough questions at me. The big change I wish my dad and your grandpa were here yet to be a big part of this. Uh, you know, as you know, when I was growing up, every bill was just, are we going to be able to make that land payment? Are we going to be able, you know, we made them, but they were so tight. And now we're kind of getting where things are coming together. And uh, we're still having to work hard to make sure that stays together. But for changes, uh, I don't know. I guess the big change I mean, <laughs> is to get our bin set up right, so we know that's all taken care of. But is there any practices in farming that you've seen over the years that you've looked at and you're like, hey, I think that would be kind of cool that now you're looking at it and you're like, hey, maybe I'd like to try something like that. I know. And you think about it, every year since I started as a little boy, every year things have changed. And, you know, you look across, some of the neighbors have tried things that we hadn't tried yet. And, you know, at first you're like, oh, that ain't going to work. And then all at once, like, that is a good practice. You know, cause we used to plow everything, plow everything, and then disc it, disc it, so it was so fine. Now you hardly ever see a plow in this area running around uh i think it would be neat sometime to try cover crop on a couple fields and see how that works and then some of the things i know we'd like to try kind of scary because it all costs anymore as everybody knows a huge chunk of money to make that next step and then is it going to pay off or is it going to be something you jump into and then two years later nobody's doing it and you got the equipment that nobody wants to buy what would be an example of that that you've seen over the years where everyone kind of got in on a fad, they bought into it, spent $50,000, $100,000, and then used it for three years and then just kind of threw it in the weeds? Yeah, for a while around here, it was grain drills to plant beans. It seemed like everybody was kind of jumping into it for a while, and then all at once a bunch jumped out they're like hey we're getting white mold in our beans they can't breathe they're staying damp in there uh it just seemed like a lot of guys shot out of that area but we still do see guys with the grain drills but i don't see it as much with the like eight inch spacings it's more let's go 15 inches or something we used to have a 15 inch bean planter right that 5130 yeah white. yeah and that's what happened in our operation we were starting to get white mold in between the bean rows and do you remember what population you were planting at? Huh. It was probably kind of high at the time in which we probably could have cut back, but I, I'm, I'm wanting to say it was around 160,000 
but that's been quite a few years ago. Oh, I took my hat off. I've ran into different people lately when I've been off shopping me and Summer, my daughter, our daughter, one day, Mama Cornstar, my daughter. I don't want to say my daughter, and then Mama Cornstar saying, well, what happened to my daughter? But anyhow, we've been shopping. I've had different people come up to me. Daddy Cornstar, I didn't recognize you at first. You always have your stocking cap on, but you were talking, we heard your voice, and then we realized it was you. So take my hat off for a minute. It's probably messy and stuff. But that's one nice thing about being a farmer. You don't need to comb your hair. You don't need to look good. So if someone's out and about and they see you somewhere, what should they do? I see it quite a bit when we're out and about. Sometimes people are off, you know, and I can hear them like, oh, that's Daddy Cornstar or whatever. Do, feel free. I love it. I love it. People come over, they give me high five, they shake my hand or whatever, and maybe say a few words or whatever, but I really do appreciate it. Uh, I know. So come over and say hi. Don't just try to sneak a sneaky picture and walk yeah, away and be scared to talk to you. Just... I had a guy the other day that was sitting not too far from me, and I could see him with his camera up. And all at once, I looked at him, and you know, and then he did talk. But uh, just come over. I, I had some little ones the other day come running up to me. Hey, Daddy Cornstar, can I get a selfie with you? Absolutely, yes. I love it. So, 20 bucks a piece. Yeah. This one's the next video. Whew. Hopefully we can do this at least weekly or maybe sooner. I don't know. Make some comments of what you guys would like to talk about. Today is just kind of thanking you guys for everything. Christmas is coming on here pretty quick. I want to wish everybody Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's and stuff. Oh, I was going to mention Mama Cornstar wanted to say hi today too. She's up in the house. She's just <coughs> not feeling real good. She looks fine and everything, but she's kind of got this cough and she just didn't want to wander out to the shops this morning. So Mama Cornstar says hi to everybody too. See you guys next time and we'll talk to you real soon.